Test three. This is the Express Publishing preliminary English test for schools. Test three. There are four parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. You will have six minutes at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now, because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. Part one. There are seven questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures. And a short recording. For each question, choose the correct answer: A, B, or C. Before we start, here is an example. What will the woman eat for breakfast? I'm making breakfast. Would you like anything? Yes, please. I'll have what you're having. I'm going to have a boiled egg toast and a mug of coffee. Great, but I'll have tea instead. The answer is B. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One. Where did the man leave his keys? Jessica, have you seen my keys? Aren't they on the kitchen table? I thought I saw them there earlier. Or try looking in the hall. Oh, sorry. Here they are. I found them. They were by the computer. Now listen again. Jessica, have you seen my keys? Aren't they on the kitchen table? I thought I saw them there earlier. Or try looking in the hall. Oh, sorry. Here they are. I found them. They were by the computer. Two. Which platform does the Birmingham train leave from? Could the passengers for Brighton please make their way to platform four? The train will be departing in 15 minutes. The 1604 to Birmingham is about to depart from platform six, not platform two, as previously announced. Now listen again. Could the passengers for Brighton please make their way to platform four? The train will be departing in 15 minutes. The 1604 to Birmingham is about to depart from platform six, not platform two, as previously announced. Three. What did the man buy from the shop? Did you pick up my dry cleaning when you were out? Yes, and I also sent your parcel and bought the book you had asked for. Thank you, Charlie. Now listen again. Did you pick up my dry cleaning when you were out? Yes, and I also sent your parcel and bought the book you had asked for. Thank you, Charlie. Four. What did the woman photograph? I finished my photography project. I based mine on wildlife and nature. Great. I finished too, but I focused on people and culture. Now listen again. I finished my photography project. I based mine on wildlife and nature. Great. I finished too, but I focused on people and culture. Five. How will the man get to college tomorrow? Do you want a lift tomorrow, Kevin? I think there's a bus strike. Yes, that's right. I'm thinking about cycling to be healthier for once. But thank you for the offer. Now listen again. Do you want a lift tomorrow, Kevin? I think there's a bus strike. Yes, that's right. I'm thinking about cycling to be healthier for once. But thank you for the offer. Six. What will the woman cook for dinner? Can we have fish tonight, Lauren? Sorry, we don't have any left. We need to go shopping. I was thinking of making pasta. No, not pasta again. How about chicken and potatoes? Yes. Okay then. Now listen again. Can we have fish tonight, Lauren? Sorry, we don't have any left. We need to go shopping. I was thinking of making pasta. No, not pasta again. How about chicken and potatoes?
Yes, OK then. 7. What is different about Tara's house? Tara, I like what you've done with your house. Is that a new sofa? No, it's the old one. But I put some new cushions on it. Everything else is the same. But I've rearranged the furniture. Now listen again. Tara, I like what you've done with your house. Is that a new sofa? No, it's the old one. But I put some new cushions on it. Everything else is the same. But I've rearranged the furniture. That is the end of part one. Part two. Now turn to part two. Questions eight to thirteen. You will hear someone talking on the radio giving a film review. For each question, choose the correct answer. A, B, or C. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. 2012 marks the 50th anniversary of the first Bond movie, 1962's Dr. No. Here at Film Forum, we were delighted to see that the 23rd Bond film was on the schedule for 2012. James Bond is one of the longest-running series in film history, and Bond 23 marked the end of a four-year gap. Work on the film was stopped in April 2010 because of uncertainty over the company's future due to several box office disasters and a dramatic drop in DVD sales. Its financial problems were so great that MGM filed for bankruptcy protection in November 2010. Fortunately, help was at hand when US firm Spyglass Entertainment came to the rescue and Bond fans breathed a sigh of relief. Skyfall is directed by Sam Mendes, who won an Oscar for 1999's American Beauty. And the storyline sees the secret agent in London, Scotland, Turkey and China. Daniel Craig plays James Bond, Agent 007, and is the sixth actor to play the role in the official Bond series. He first appeared as Bond in 2006 in Casino Royale, which was the most successful Bond film in the whole 49-year history. Casino Royale made $594 million worldwide. In Skyfall, Judi Dench makes her seventh appearance in the Bond films, playing the MI6 boss, M. Without wishing to give the plot away, it is M's past that triggers a threat to MI6. Agent 007 must find and destroy the threat, whatever it takes. Back to 2010 now, and three of my favourite films. The first is Tangled, the 3D animated Disney version of the famous story of Rapunzel. This is one for the kids that also has some subtle adult humour, much like the Shrek films so parents aren't left out and can also be entertained. Next on my list of 2010 favourites is The King's Speech, a period drama with Colin Firth playing King George VI and Geoffrey Rush playing his offbeat speech therapist. What I love about this film in particular is the unexpected humour and the magic of the two lead actors' performances. My third 2010 favourite is Hereafter, directed by Clint Eastwood. The film stars Matt Damon as a psychic medium who finds his psychic powers annoying. Three people, each of whose lives is touched by death, are brought together in the plot, and the resulting film is moving and even funny too at times. Next week I'll be looking at my three favourite films from 2009. If there's any contribution you'd like to make, you can contact us via the website. Now listen again. 2012 marks the 50th anniversary of the first Bond movie, 1962's Dr. No. Here at Film Forum, we were delighted to see that the 23rd Bond film 
was on the schedule for 2012. James Bond is one of the longest-running series in film history, and Bond 23 marked the end of a four-year gap. Work on the film was stopped in April 2010 because of uncertainty over the company's future due to several box office disasters and a dramatic drop in DVD sales. Its financial problems were so great that MGM filed for bankruptcy protection in November 2010. Fortunately, help was at hand when US firm Spyglass Entertainment came to the rescue and Bond fans breathed a sigh of relief. Skyfall is directed by Sam Mendes, who won an Oscar for 1999's American Beauty. And the storyline sees the secret agent in London, Scotland, Turkey and China. Daniel Craig plays James Bond, Agent 007, and is the sixth actor to play the role in the official Bond series. He first appeared as Bond in 2006 in Casino Royale, which was the most successful Bond film in the whole 49-year history. Casino Royale made $594 million worldwide. In Skyfall, Judi Dench makes her seventh appearance in the Bond films, playing the MI6 boss, M. Without wishing to give the plot away, it is M's past that triggers a threat to MI6. Agent 007 must find and destroy the threat, whatever it takes. Back to 2010 now, and three of my favourite films. The first is Tangled, the 3D animated Disney version of the famous story of Rapunzel. This is one for the kids that also has some subtle adult humour, much like the Shrek films so parents aren't left out and can also be entertained. Next on my list of 2010 favourites is The King's Speech, a period drama with Colin Firth playing King George VI and Geoffrey Rush playing his offbeat speech therapist. What I love about this film in particular is the unexpected humour and the magic of the two lead actors' performances. My third 2010 favourite is Hereafter, directed by Clint Eastwood. The film stars Matt Damon as a psychic medium who finds his psychic powers annoying. Three people, each of whose lives is touched by death, are brought together in the plot, and the resulting film is moving and even funny too at times. Next week I'll be looking at my three favourite films from 2009. If there's any contribution you'd like to make, you can contact us via the website. That is the end of part two.